Marcus Conte reporting. Very important subject. We're going to talk about election fraud, election fraud in our country. What is election fraud? Hey, Google, what is election fraud? According to Wikipedia, electoral fraud, sometimes referred to as election manipulation or vote rigging, is a legal interference with the process of an election, either by increasing the vote share of the favored candidate, depressing the vote share of the rival candidates, or both. Oh, so do we have that in our country? No, right? We have free and fair elections in our country, right? Isn't it democracy and one vote, one person, right? It's all right, but fucking no. We have rigged elections, the Democratic primaries are rigged the general elections are likely to be rigged using rigged machines right do we have evidence do we have proof is it a conspiracy theory no is actual evidence actual in courts of law the dnc has admitted their fraud right out in the open so i want to relitigate this because it's fascinating because bernie sanders raised six million dollars in two days right so is he a viable candidate? Yeah, he's the front runner now because he raised the most money. Right? So, but there's also another school of thought that are pissed off, still pissed off. This is very, very important because if you don't think that, um, that I don't know, if, if, if it doesn't interest you about election fraud in our country, then, you know, shut it off, go somewhere else. You wrap yourself in Trump. Oh, I love my Trump, right? There's also people that love their Bernie, right? But there's also another group of people that are Bernie or bust that are never, in, you know, you could, they won't, they're not going to give a dollar to Bernie Sanders, you know, unless you hold a gun to their head. One of such people is, a, is one of the primary, um, I reached out to Jared. Jared, I'd like to interview you. I'd love to have you on my show. You'd be right in the screen. You see where your, where your Facebook page is? You'd be right over there and we, we can talk about it. I'd love to have him on the show. But... The, the, this is what uh, Jared um, put out, and he's one of the guys that's pissed off that Bernie Sanders is a fraud and a fake and a Russian, you know, whatever, right? So let's see what he says. Blo <clears throat> this is Jared on his page yesterday. I'm blocking every brainwashed idiot who wants to tell me to be selfless by giving my hard-earned time and money to another fake Bernie Sanders, quote, presidential campaign. Just get the hell away from me and don't come back. I sued the DNC for fraud in 2016. Two witnesses dropped dead and your precious Bernie didn't lift a finger. I have no cares how you choose to waste your time and money. Flush it down the toilet for all I care while you engage in your pathetic Bernie fantasies. Just get your brainwashed zombie cultish shell of an existence Far away from my orbit. Wow. 500 uh, likes and 600 comments and 240 shares. Jared Beck has reach. Right? So that's Jared Beck. Pissed off. Who are the uh, two that dropped dead? Are, um, Seth Rich would have been a uh, witness. And um, uh, Sean Lucas, who died mysteriously. You know. Sean Lucas found with three mysterious chemicals in his body, found dead on his on his bathroom floor. And Seth Rich, we know, disappeared or was killed or murdered. Was he shot dead on uh, in a, you know one night in D.C.? No, none of it. None of it adds up. Uh, so, it, how just how so that was that date by the way was uh, we're going to look at the 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 details of the fraud. But let's let's just get a little preliminary first before we go forward. So this is Jared 16 hours ago. This is going to be H.A. Goodman, August 25th, 2017. Jared's on the show. He's sitting with his wife, Elizabeth. Uh, so it's a little after, after they got the shaft, right after, right after they got the shaft. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll tell you, the way that I see things is this. You have... This is also when H.A. Goodman was still, uh, I don't know, still, still on the side of reality, I guess. A wonderful couple... In, in you guys battling a very corrupt machine and then you have just utter morons who are quote unquote journalists like Dave Weigel at the public well, let me, relations let me, firm. Let me tell you something about that because this is this what really disappoints me about our society, H.A., 
is the fact that we had two witnesses die in this case. And I still have these pe fucking people who call themselves journalists mocking us. OK, there was actually a third because one of the prosecutors, uh, that black prosecutor guy, I forgot his name. Ended up in the river, ended up in the ocean. They threw him into the water. So Sean Lucas, three bodies, three bodies. Sean Lucas, Seth Rich, and the, uh, the prosecuting attorney. Denigrating us for being concerned about that. And, you know, it goes beyond a lack of awareness in this country. This country has a vicious, corrupt core, okay? And the most vicious, corrupt people are sitting in D.C. right now running the show and forming the media uh, elite and establishment that surrounds and protects them and promulgates their bullshit all over the airways. And I am sick and fucking tired of living in this country and having those be the people that run the show. Okay? All right? Because I've got two little kids. I know you have two little kids as well. And I, I can tell you, I didn't, you know, what motivated me personally to file this lawsuit wasn't, really what's going on in my life or what's going on in Elizabeth's life or the life of our clients because you know we see our clients uh, lose in court all the time. We see them get shafted by the healthcare system, get shafted by this country, and nobody in this country gives a fuck about them um, who's in the leadership, okay? And let me tell you something. I, I know that those problems uh, are, are uh, the problem of this country, this country in terms of corruption? I know that it's so deep seated. It's you know it's 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 taken root over many many decades, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. But my hope, my hope in filing this lawsuit was that at least might be some kind of spark to get things rolling, so that the, by the time my kids are adults in this society, they're not living in in, in a more in a more an immoral oligarchic tyrannical piece of shit government that fucking goes to war in my name with my tax dollars on a perpetual basis and fucking incinerates people and I have no fucking channel to stop it and as an American I find I am ashamed I am ashamed to call myself an American and let me tell you something else okay there were people in Nazi Germany that didn't know what the fuck was going on either okay they were fucking clueless they were fucking brainwashed. And I'm not making this comparison because of any bullshit comparison between Trump and Nazism that's going around that the mainstream media wants you to believe. What I'm talking about is the real government we have in this country, okay? And in my view, they are morally equivalent or worse than the government of the Nazi, Nazi Germany, okay? Because they've been going on longer and they've been fucking over not just everybody in this country, but around the world. And I'm fucking sick of it as a human being. So that's one pissed off dude, right? These guys, he's fucking pissed off. Jared Beck's pissed off. What's he pissed off about? So here's the, um, here's what happened in May of uh, 2017. They filed the case. They did all the work. They, they, they represented people. Two people got killed. Two of their main witnesses dead. I had a third the prosecutor dead. <clears throat> Debbie Wasserman Schultz rigs the election against Tim Canova, who I interviewed and he told us all about what happened. Go listen to the interview. It's fucking amazing. Uh, he's telling us so there's rigging going on in Florida. Right? DNC lawyers argue DNC has right to pick candidates in back rooms. You can't make this up, right? There's, did, I don't know how many people know about this, but it seems like people forget they're actually arguing over actual elections. It's the number one problem in this country. Without elections... Without fair elections, how do you get the voice of the people uh, voiced? You don't. Right? On April 28th, the transcript was released from the most recent hearing at a federal court in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. On the lawsuit filed on behalf of Bernie Sanders supporters against the Democratic National Committee and former DNC chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz for rigging the Democratic primary for Hillary Clinton. Throughout the hearing, lawyers represented, representing the DNC and Debbie Wasserman Schultz doubled down on arguments confirming the disdain the Democratic establishment has towards Bernie Sanders supporters and any entity challenging the party's status quo. Shortly into the hearing, the DNC attorneys uh, stipulated uh, ensuring neutrality in the Democratic primary, a discretionary rule 
that it didn't need to adapt to begin with, right? So throughout this, you're going to hear the DNC moving the goalposts. They're going to keep shifting, the, moving it back and forth, right? Ah, the court the court would have to find that people who fervently supported Bernie Sanders and who purportedly did not know that this favoritism was going on would have given to Bernie Sanders, the senator, if they had known that there was this purported favoritism. That is that is the biggest pile of legal gibberish that you could possibly make up. Here's what Jared said. Jared Beck, the attorney representing Sanders, supported, support, supports in the class action suit, supporters, retorted that the DNC charter is not akin to political rhetoric. A politician would, would use, uh, not akin to rhetoric, a politician would use during a campaign, but rather an inherent and important part of democracy in America. Right. Free, fair elections, it's part of democracy. You can't claim political rhetoric instead. Right? The entire argument of the DNC in this lawsuit is to conflate the, prom the, the promises of a political candidate with those of an election arbiter bound to neutrality by the DNC charter. Right? So, again, so that's, they're, they're saying the charter, DNC is saying the charter outweighs fair elections in our country. The people paid money in reliance on the understanding that the primary elections for the Democratic nominee nominating process in 2016 were fair and impartial. And that's just that's not just a bedrock assumption that we would assume just by virtue of the fact that we live in a democracy and we assume that our elections are run in a fair and impartial manner. But that's what the Democratic National Committee Committee's own charter says. It says it in black and white. And they, they can't deny that. Right? Right. So here's the here's the real the real fucking knife in the right knife in the back. Later in the hearing, attorneys representing the DNC DNC claimed the Democratic National Committee would be well within their rights to go into back rooms like they, they used to and smoke cigars and pick the candidate. Right? How did that work out in 1968 when they did that and they fucking they lost to Nixon? By pushing the argument throughout the proceeding of this class action suit, the Democratic National Committee is telling voters in a court of law that they see no enforceable obligation in having to run a fair and impartial primary election. All right. All right. So that's pretty powerful, right? So, you know... What what's the takeaway? What is the what is the point? Why do I keep talking about this? Why is it necessary? Because right now you have look, gaslighting in America works. Right? It works, right? The the mainstream media has been working overtime for two years convincing you that what I just told you didn't happen. What really happened was that Russia swooped into the DNC, took over the servers, and and rigged the election against Bernie Sanders, right? And, and did it all across the country. Everything that happened, everything, was Russia. Right? And, and a lot of people believe it, right? There's so many people that even today are still saying, smart people are saying, yeah, yeah, well, you know, Russia had something to do with it, right? Trump was involved with Russia, right? So Trump's involved with Russia, and the Russians hacked the election. There's so many details that they failed to, to account for. DNC law, the DNC servers were never inspected by the FBI. They had an outside source, crowdsource, um, crowd strike, uh, take a look at the servers. They wiped the servers. Hillary Clinton lied to Congress six times, deleted 30,000 you know, emails that would have shown quid pro quo between the DNC, the media, foreign entities like Saudi Arabia, how the money was flowing into the DNC. So much corruption, so much election rigging, all, all evidence, all evidence based. And we can't forget about this. You know, we can't just let it go, you know. So, and if you don't think that, why am I, why will I keep talking about it? Because this is the story of our time. 
that, okay, uh, you liked Trump. Ooh, I love my Trump, right? But if you're if you're okay with people rigging an election, why don't you think that that would happen to you? Why do you think that? I mean, it, it's just preposterous to think that 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 election fraud that the Democratic Committee got away with in broad daylight and nobody disputed isn't still alive and well and can spill over into the next presidential election. What are we going to do? Wait until it's too late? What Trump gets cheated and then what? Civil War? Well, we have another another Florida debacle and let the the um, the Supreme Court pick the pick, pick the president. Right? So this is very important, and in my view, this is the story of our time. Leading into the next election, this is the story that matters because Bernie Sanders just raised six million dollars, and he ain't fucking around, right? And at least half of his people are still behind him, and half of them are venomously never going back. So. Can he, is he a valid, viable candidate? Yeah, he raised the most money. He's the, he's the front runner right now. Right, first day announcement. He's the front runner. So it is a fascinating story. And uh, I'm going to keep covering it, whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Marcus Conti reporting. Don't forget to subscribe, will you? Hit the subscribe button. Thank you.